glad you bring up that notion of the, I think you called it the paternalistic attitude of medicine mm -hmm. because I was at a discussion recently about the state of medical uh -huh. education uh -huh. in medicine and uh, and someone used the phrase uh, that the, the age of the M deity is gone, mm -hmm. uh, that it used yeah. to be you could just dictate to your patients and that's really not the mm -hmm. case these days. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you're absolutely right. That's a big crux of the, uh, of the notion of, of making sure that pre-medical students and medical students mm -hmm. understand the uh, the behaviors of their patients because it is much mm -hmm. more these days a conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, Barbara, as we said before, you interact with, with a lot of, of medical students I and, do, and patients. So are you actually seeing that? Um, well, I, I don't know that medical students necessarily know exactly what's coming, right. what's coming for them. Uh, if they have worked in a healthcare setting, they uh, make comments on some of the things they've seen with doctor-patient interactions and some of the things they haven't liked. Um, but not all medical students have had that background. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very important thing for uh, applicants to have, that is, a, some experience with patients in dealing with people who are not at their best. I always tell students that uh, patients are, you're going to be seeing them at their worst. Uh, they're sick, they're worried. Uh, just think of how charming you are when you have the flu yourself. Not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, so they have to really learn to, to deal with people who are not uh, at their best. Uh, and um, it's, it's a difficult, it's a skill that has to be acquired. Uh, it's not something you necessarily know how to do. Uh, and listening to people is a skill that has to be acquired. Mm -hmm. um, when we have a conversation, it's usually 50-50. 50% you're talking, 50% I'm talking. Here we're 33, 33, 33. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, in the doctor-patient relationship, really the doctor should be saying almost nothing and the patient should be talking most of the time. Uh, and it's very hard. Uh, the other thing we teach uh, doctors, uh, medical students is uh, when there's a lull in the conversation, don't talk. <laughs> you just have to be a little bit uncomfortable with that. And these are the kinds of skills that we teach students. If they have a background, though, in psychology, they would understand why we have to wait for somebody to speak uh, and understand the underpinnings of the way uh, medicine is practiced. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great tip for, for probably many of our, our pre-medical students out there to start <laughs> start acquiring and start uh, building into their daily habits. Start listening yep. instead listen of talking. <laughs> I think it's good in general for anyone to listen rather than talk. Absolutely, but yeah. especially as a healthcare administrator. Ab absolutely, a absolutely. Certainly. I think yeah. it's particularly interesting you mentioned that when there's a lull in the conversation, when there's that silence, mm -hmm. that people feel that need to fill that silence yes. with more yes. talking. But oftentimes i found if I'm talking with a patient that if you allow that silence to just sit there for a few seconds, it creates that little bit of discomfort, which is actually mm -hmm. a good thing. It means mm -hmm. the patient will often offer more information. They'll give you more clear answers sometimes because mm -hmm. they continue telling you mm -hmm. what was bothering them or whatever the conversation mm -hmm. that is that you were having. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, there was a, a big study I remember that showed that residents, uh -huh. uh, they'd done this large study, seeing how long basically after a resident asked so what brings you in today? How long they let the patient mm -hmm. talk before mm -hmm. just interrupting them? Mm -hmm. And ultimately the study found that the average was something like eight or nine seconds that they would say, what brings <laughs> you in today? And of course most patients don't come in with just one very straightforward complaint that mm -hmm. they can state in five seconds. It's often multiple things going mm -hmm. on, especially if it's uh, you know, a general medical All exam right. that you're doing once a year. And if you're interrupting the person after nine seconds and just going to yes That's or no right. questions, you're gonna miss so much of what that patient really has to offer. Uh, in terms of what is bothering them and what are things that you can be working on mm -hmm. with that patient. Mm -hmm.